Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to discuss what will be the characteristic impedance and also the reflection coefficient at any particular point of the transmission line. In more precise for this video, I'm going to discuss what will be the characteristic impedance and reflection coefficient at the source and also at the load. So this will be the objective for this video. This will be the part 7 series discussion on transmission line theory. If you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. For this transmission line theory, I suggest you to start from part 1. Okay, because all these part one all the way to part seven, they are actually all linked. If you miss any part, you will not be able to appreciate this part seven. Okay, so therefore, I suggest you guys to start from transmission line theory all the way from part one series. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, really, thank you so much. This is what I have discussed on part 6 series discussion. Okay, so if you have somehow forgotten how I actually obtained all this equation, you can always take a look on part 6 series discussion. But like what I said earlier on, okay, all these transmission line theory, they are all related or linked together. So therefore, I strongly suggest you to start from all the way from part one so that you will be able to appreciate all the discussion on transmission line theory. But let's come to this part six series discussion. I have derived this equation at the part six series discussion. So this set of equation actually represent a lossless transmission line. For example, in this diagram here, this can be a lossless transmission line, which means that I don't have resistance, I don't have conductance, the R and G is equal to zero. And therefore, this set of equation is going to represent, which means that any point, the voltage at, on the transmission line can be represented by this equation. Any point on the transmission line for the current can be represented by this equation. Okay, so again, please look at part 6 series in order to close the loop. At the part 6 series discussion, I have discussed on reflection coefficient. I have also successfully derived this equation on reflection coefficient. Okay, but in this video, I'm going to further discuss on this reflection coefficient at the load and also at the source so as to complete the discussion on the transmission line theory. Let's come back to this diagram again. So this is a lossless transmission line. Okay, so there are two indicator points that I want to discuss for today. Firstly, I'm going to discuss the load. Okay, so basically when it's at the load, okay, basically the Z is equal to zero, okay, which means that this is actually the reference point. Next, at the source, basically the length of the transmission line is denoted as L. Okay, so therefore at the source, it will be equal to minus L. You probably will ask why we have minus length. Okay, because length in term is positive and there's no minus length. However, let's take a look on over here. This is what we call an incident wave. Incident wave move from the left to the right. As for the refracted wave, move from the right to the left. And over here is a reference point and we actually move to the left. And hence, because of this, the Z become minus L because we actually move to the left, okay? So therefore, the Z is equal to minus L if we take a reference over here, okay? So this is the reason why at the source, the Z is equal to minus L. As I mentioned earlier on, there will be two scenario, the load and also the source. Let's focus on the load first. So when it's at the load, okay, again, these are the two self equation. This two set of equation is what I have derived early on. So this will be the two set of equation that will be represented over here. Okay, so I want to know what will be the voltage and also the current at this point here. So how can I do this? 
Okay, so when it's at the load, okay, it will be at the reference point, which means that Z is equal to zero. Over here, you can see that if Z is equal to zero, this will be E zero. E zero is equal to one. So therefore, I only have this term, which is represent here. Same over here, if Z is equal to zero, E zero is equal to one. Therefore, I only have this term, okay, which is represent here, which means that this B naught, okay, which means that the voltage over here will be governed by this equation. Next, let's move on to the current. Okay, it's the same thing for current. The Z is equal to zero, therefore E zero is equal to one. What I left will be this term. Same for on the right hand side here, this will be equal to zero, equal to one, sorry. And therefore I have this equation here. So this will be the current at this particular point here. Okay, will be governed by this equation. So over here at the load, I actually managed to obtain the voltage and also the current. Let's move on to the source now. So when I'm actually at the source, my Z is equal to minus L. Okay, so what I need to do is basically all the Z will be replaced by minus L. Same for this term and this other two term here. So the outcome okay, will be like this. So this Z will be minus L. Okay, so this term you can see here. So basically Z will be minus L. So minus minus become positive. And you can see that Z is replaced by L. Same over here, so this is positive. Once I multiply by minus L, this will become minus. I actually obtain this point here, which means that at this particular point here, my voltage will be represented by this equation here. Okay, so again, I can do the same thing on the current. Okay, so this Z will be minus L. So minus minus become positive, this Z become L. Over here, this Z again represent by minus L. So basically, instead of positive, it become minus. So at the current over here, it can actually represent by this equation here. So what I have finished discuss over here will be the load and also the source. I managed to find the voltage and also the current at the load and also at the source. Okay, so now let's move on to find the characteristic impedance. Okay, so this again is the same two set of equation. So I just want to make it easier for everyone to understand. So this part here, I want to rewrite as I plus not, this will be the incident wave and this will be the refractor wave. I just want to make this easier for our discussion. Okay, let's come to the characteristic impedance. How can we actually define the characteristic impedance? The okay, characteristic impedance will be equal to voltage over current. From this equation, I can see that this will be the incident, this will be the refracted, this will be the incident, this will be the refracted. Over here, I should be able to find my characteristic impedance if I have my incident voltage over my incident current. I can also find my characteristic impedance if I use my refracted voltage over my refracted current. So basically, this is the definition of characteristic impedance. Okay, so let's again finish the discussion on the characteristic impedance. Okay, so let's take for the incidence here. So basically, at the incidence will be incidence voltage. Okay, so this will be the incident voltage. So this part I rewrite over here. So you can see that this point is basically from the incident voltage here. And for the incident current will be over here. So again, you can see that this will be the incident current. Okay, so what happened is minus minus this exponential term disappeared. So this will be the characteristic impedance okay, at the any point of the transmission line will be governed by this for incidence. Okay, so for refracted wave, okay, it's the same thing again. Okay, so for the refracted wave will be from the refracted voltage over the refracted current. So this will be the refracted voltage. So this part here I have written here. So this will be the refracted voltage. As for the refracted current, okay, it's governed by this equation. Okay, again, these are rewrite over here. You can see here, exponential will be cancel each other, cancel off. What I left will be represented by this equation here. So basically, this will be the characteristic impedance. Okay, if I'm going to use to represent by the refracted, okay, which is the refracted voltage over refracted current. Next. Let's move on to the refraction coefficient. Let's come to the definition of refraction coefficient. 
for refraction coefficient will be refracted voltage over incident voltage. While if I want to use current, will be refracted current over incident current. So again, let's do a detailed study on refracted coefficient here. Okay, so let's do for voltage wise here. Basically, will be represented by here. So the refracted voltage will be here. So this part will be the refracted voltage. Okay, you can see that this part will be from the refracted voltage. As for the incident voltage, will be represented by this part here. So this part will be represented over here. D log plus E minus J beta Z. Okay, so basically this minus minus become EJ2 beta Z here. So basically this will be the refraction coefficient. Let's say we find at the current here. Okay, for the current will be refracted current. So this will be the refracted current. So this equation will be written here. Okay, this is the incident current will be represented by this over here. So this will be the incident current. Again, from here, this there's a minus. I take up the minus here. IO minus over IO plus, And this term become EJ2 beta Z. Okay, so basically, this is how I find the refraction coefficient. Over here, you can see that I managed to find my characteristic impedance and also my refraction coefficient. Let's move on. Okay, so let's find the characteristic impedance and refraction coefficient at the load. Early on, this equation is a very general form. Okay, basically, it can be at any point on the transmission line. Okay, so now I want to be more specific. Okay, let's find my characteristic impedance and also refraction coefficient at the load. Okay, so this is the equation that I obtained early on. So basically, I have my V. I have my current. Okay, so in order to find my characteristic impedance, which is V over I, okay, over here. So what you can do is basically this part here, this is the V, will be represented by here, divided by this term here, which is written at the bottom here. Okay, so I rearrange the equation. Okay, they become like this. So this is simply just Z not bring on top here. Okay, this is basically my characteristic impedance at the load. Next. Okay, so I'm going to do a cross product. Okay, so basically this ZL multiplied by this term here, which is represented here, and my Z0, which, which is over here, Z0 BO plus plus BO minus here. So basically I have done this. I'm going to open up the bracket here. So when I open up ZL multiplied by BO plus, which is here, ZL minus BO minus here will be represented by here. This Z0 plus BO plus, which is represented here. Z0 multiplied by BO minus, which is represented here. So I'm going to take the common factor here. So basically, you can see that I want to take all the BO plus here. So this BO plus, I want to be on the left. So this thing I move over. This will be minus Z0 BO plus. Over here, this term here will be the minus here. So basically, this is the minus here. So basically, this term minus, I bring over, become positive. That's how I get this equation here. So next, I take the common factor. Okay, so this is BO plus, which is ZL minus Z0. Okay, this will be BO minus, will be the ZL plus Z0 over here. So over here, again, okay, I can find my refraction coefficient at the load. Okay, so basically, this is a V0 minus, this is will be the refracted. This will be the incident. So the refracted over the incidence, I actually obtained this equation. So over here, you can see that I managed to find my characteristic impedance at the load and also the refraction coefficient at the load. Okay, so this will be the two equation that I actually obtained at the load. So let's move on to the source. Okay, I have forgotten to change this. So basically, this will be at the source. Sorry about this. Okay, so this will be at the source now. Okay, so this will be the same thing. Okay, so basically, this will be what I have obtained earlier on. So now, instead of at the load, now will be at the source. Okay, so it's the same. Basically, what I need to do is basically the V over I. Okay, so basically, this V term, basically all this part here will be here. Okay, this I term here, which is this part, I put it over here. So I rearrange it over here. So from here, okay, you... You can rearrange the equation because of this set node, I can bring it here. This part here will be over here and this part will be at the bottom. So for this part here, I have managed to find my 
characteristic impedance at the source. Okay, so this will be my characteristic impedance at the source. Next, okay, I want to find my refraction coefficient. Okay, again, I'm going to do a cross multiply. So this Zs multiply the term at the below this term here. So you can see this BO plus EJ beta minus BO minus here. So this ZO multiplied by this. So you can see here, these two terms are exactly the same. Okay, again, I open out the bracket. Okay, so this ZS multiplied by this, ZS multiplied by this, ZL multiplied by this, and ZL multiplied by this. So basically, I have derived this equation. Okay, again, I like to group them together. Okay, I like to group them by, for example, all the BO plus on the left-hand side. So uh, this term I keep, okay, the BO plus this term I move over, it become minus here. Okay, so this term here, okay, which is the BO minus, which is still here, this term here I move over, it become a plus over here. Okay, so next I'm going to take the common factor, okay, which is the BO plus here. So I left this ZS EJ beta L, okay, which is from here. Again, this part I have taken out, this will be the outcome. Same for this here, I take the common factor, which is the BO minus here. Okay, so I left is basically this ZS E minus, okay, so plus Z naught, okay, E minus J beta here. So again, you can see that the refraction coefficient at the source, okay, which is this over BO plus here. So this thing here, I move it to the below. Okay, so therefore, this term here is on top. And this term here is at the below here. So basically, this will be the reflection coefficient at the source. Okay, so this will be the end of this video. Over here, okay, you can see that I actually derive the characteristic impedance and reflection coefficient at the load and also at the source. With this, i like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much, guys.